What's good team? Welcome to another Small James Coding Tutorial. Super exciting video today where we're going to be looking at how we can use the ChatGPT API using a JavaScript file or Node.js more specifically. The technology is absolutely phenomenal. If you're watching this video the day it came out, then it was released yesterday. So it's time to get aboard that hype train and start using this API in all of your projects today. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and sub. At the end, we're quickly going to look at how we can go from just accessing their API to building our own API using ChatGPT. So stick around for that if you want. And yeah, like and sub, let's get into it. So we're going to start off in an empty Visual Studio Code window in our directory of our choosing. And I'm going to open up the terminal down here and type npm init dash y to open up a package.json file. Now we're going to have to install the npm package openai. Equally, you can do this in Python if you want. The links to the documentation for both Node.js and Python are in the description down below, so check those out if you like. But yeah, we're just going to write npm i open AI install that so now that will be added to our package.json file we're also going to come in here and just quickly make a div script and that's just going to be node server.js because that's what we're going to call our file and then I'm going to make a server.js file now once again you can call this file whatever you want it's just for the API that we're going to be building at the end using the chat GPT API but anywho now we can start accessing the open AI modules However, since it has a modular import, so we're going to import configuration and OpenAI API from OpenAI, we're going to have to come into our package.json file and just in here, give this a type of module because it's a modular import. And so now that's going to allow this kind of import syntax to work. What we're also going to do is create a .env file and in here you'll have your open AI secret key. I'll show you how to get that soon. This is a top secret key. Don't show it to anyone because you will be billed for your usage. It's an incredibly cheap API, so I wouldn't stress about it, but it's definitely worth keeping this key private. While we're at it, we're also just going to make a git ignore so that you don't end up accidentally pushing this to any public repository and just add the .env file to the git ignore. So this will stay on your local device. Now what we're going to do in here is just say import create require from module and then we're just going to say const require is equal to create require call that as a function and pass in the argument import.meta.url this is just going to allow us to use both the require syntax and the import modular imports in here and we're going to need require because we're going to have to require a .env package to manage our environment variables and then we're just going to have to call the config method. Now obviously we're going to have to install that as well so that's just going to be .env. Now this will allow us to use environment variables in here and the first thing we're going to have to do is access our OpenAI secret key. So we're just going to say OpenAI secret key is equal to process.env and then just whatever you have called your key. So I've called my key that. Now the next thing we're going to do is come over to the OpenAI API website. You'll have to log in and create an account. You should get 18 free dollars of usage or credits or whatever that is. So that's actually a huge amount of usage considering how cheap this API is to use. It's like 0 0.006 cents or dollars per token, which is mad. Once again, that information is all in the description down below at the links. But yeah, you're going to want to come over to this page. This will be linked down there too. So come into this API key page, click on API keys under user and create a new secret key if you don't already have one. And a little window will come up allowing you to copy that. And then we're just going to copy that key directly in here and paste it as the value just in here. So it might be something like that. Now that that's saved, we can close the env file. I've pasted my key in there. You should have two. And so now we can really get to the fun part, which is configuring OpenAI and then calling requests and all that kind of stuff. So we're just going to say const configuration is equal to new, and we're going to use the configuration method, open up an object inside of that, and in here we're going to have the API key, and we're just going to set that to OpenAI secret key right there. Now that we have configured our configuration, we can say const OpenAI is equal to new, open AI API and we can just pass in our configuration just like that. 
So now that we have configured OpenAI, the next thing we're going to do is define an asynchronous function that's just going to be called send prompt, just like that. So here we have an async function, and in here what we're going to do is define a model. So OpenAI offers a whole array of different models. We're going to be using the models that work specifically for ChatGPT, and so that is going to be GPT-3.5-Turbo. dash dash turbo. Once again, all of this is in the docs. And the next thing we're going to do is define messages. And that is going to be equal to an array with some interesting contents. So inside of messages, basically what we're going to have is a series of objects. And this part is really interesting because it's the way that we interact with ChatGPT in terms of the way that it's actually a chat and we're trying to talk to like a, a robot that has you know some sense of personality. So the first thing we're going to pass in here and this is consistent for all of the different uh, items in the messages array, is it's an object, and the first entry is gonna be a role, and then the second entry is going to be content. And once again, this is going to be consistent for all of them. I might just make this extra clear, so I'll break this down onto a new line. So we have two key value pairs. The first one is role, and the second one is content. And the very first object at the zeroth index of the messages is going to be the system role. Now the role key can have one of three values. The first one is system user or assistant, and they all do slightly different things. So this message is basically our conversation, and typically a conversation is formatted with a system message first, followed by alternating user and assistant messages. So the system message helps set the behavior of the assistant. So in this particular case, we're setting this to system. So it's going to interpret this as like, all right, how do I act as a system? And in here we can provide the prompt. So we can say, okay, context view, you are a wonderfully helpful assistant, just like that. And so ChatGPT is gonna take that and be like, okay, that's who I am, cool. That's who I'm gonna be in all of my responses. All the remaining messages, all of these remaining entries are going to just be the user or assistant. And so this is kind of the conversation part. So a user message helps to instruct the assistant and they can be generated by the end user of an application or set as the developer as an instruction. So in our particular case, if we think of the ChatGPT interface when you're on the website, this is when you type a request. So I could say, what is a recipe for you know banana muffins this is kind of like the prompt and in here i have to make sure that this is a user role so that they know it's coming from me and after that what i can do is i can have an assistant and because this is going to be the very first message we won't have any assistant responses just yet you could artificially create an assistant response we don't have them yet we will append them to this messages thing as we go on to keep track of our conversation but now what we can do is since we've set the context of the chat GPT and we've given it the first prompt, we can go ahead and generate what's known as a chat completion. So we can say const completion is equal to await. We have to await it. That's why I have the asynchronous call. And we can just say open AI create chat completion, call that as a method and then pass in a dictionary argument. And this is just going to take the model and the messages just like that. And then what we can do down below is we could just console.log completion. And finally, we could just call send prompt, just like that. And that's our whole server file done. And we should be able to go ahead and call this and get a response. And we can see that I had a slight syntax error here. So that's actually a lowercase API. So that didn't work. Let's go ahead and run that once more. And that also didn't work because I have to update it just there too. So third time the charm we can see that we do in fact get everything back just as it should. We get a, we get told about the usage of our request, total tokens used, we can use that to calculate a cost. And inside of choices, this is where we will have access to our conversation. So if I just come in here and go completion.data.choices, just like that, and if we run that once more, we now console out our whole response. So here we have the message, this is the role of the assistant. So this is the assistant responding to us. We have the full content, which is the whole recipe and everything. And now what we could do to make this more flexible is we could append this to the messages and create a new prompt. So for example, what we could do is just, in this case, copy this whole thing just here. 
to our messages, add that in as context. So the context is, this is one of your responses, and then we can generate a new recipe and just say, here we're going to have a user request, and that is going to have the content of, can you please make it vegan friendly? So that's gonna be super complicated because it's, you know, banana muffins, we've got milk, we've got all that kind of stuff. So let's see if it can figure that out. We'll run that once more. And now we can see that it has interpreted the new context, which is the assistant message. So it's like, okay, this is what I previously responded with. This is the new request just here. I've got the full context of the conversation and I am acting as a helpful, you know, assistant. And now we have a vegan friendly recipe that has all of this stuff. And so we can just go ahead and access the content. And that's basically the whole API. You can just add to your previous messages and create a full conversation. We now have vegan friendly banana muffins. So that's absolutely phenomenal. Super cool. If you're just looking to use the API, that's how it's done. Hope you've enjoyed that part. Now for part two, we're quickly going to turn this into a server that we can use. Like let's say we had a front end and turn this into a whole application. So we're just going to go ahead and install express and cause just like that. And then we're going to go npm i dash dash save dev. So dev flag node mon as well. So that's going to be a developer dependency. We're just going to change this. So it says node mon just so it restarts our server. And at the top, we can just come up here and say const express is equal to require express const app is equal to express call that as a method const port is equal to 1337 because this is leet. And then what we could do down the bottom of all of this is we could just define a route. So we could say app.get, or even better, let's post, we'll post a API call to this route. We can just get a rec response. Open that up in here. We'll make sure that our app is listening. We'll pass in the port. We'll pass in a callback that just says console.log backtick server has started on port passing the port just there so now we can actually go ahead and start up our server if we run npm run dev i just want to make sure that i'm not calling this prompt here just before i do that i'm also just going to make this a little bit more flexible so what we're going to do is we're going to keep this essentially all the same we're going to remove this assistant message just here and i'm going to set this equal to input and change this. So we're gonna set the context, it's just gonna be a helpful assistant, except now we can call this as a function, pass in the input and we should get a response and we should make sure that we send back that response. So we'll just return completion.data.choices and let's just see if we can access the parameters specifically. So that's going to be, uh, we'll just pass back that whole thing, that's absolutely fine. So we'll return that from the function. In here what we're going to do is we're going to say const prompt is equal to rec.body. So we're going to have to make sure our server can receive JSON. So we'll just configure that up here. We'll say app.useExpress.json, call that as a method. We'll just also want to use cause. So we'll say app.use will require the cause package and we'll call that as a method. So now we can access from different cross origin requests. And finally in here, we're just going to call our send prompt, pass in the prompt and then we're just going to say res.send, uh, we'll pass in a status as well, dot status 200, dot send, we might send it as JSON, and we'll just say, okay, here's your response, or maybe your message, and then we can just assign it here, so say const answer is equal to that, and we can just pop that right there. So this should send back a message that's the response from the ChatGPT API. Now if we go ahead and start this up again, so we'll just say npm run dev, we can see that our server started on port 1337. I'm just going to create a test.rest file. If you haven't used .rest files before, you will need the rest client extension. Super great because now what we can do is we can just define a post route to http slash slash local host. 1337 and in here we can set the content type to application slash json and then we can just in here define the prompt it has to match what we're destructuring in our server so in our server we're destructuring the prompt and the prompt can just be what should i do when my partner is grumpy let's send that request through 
we get a 404 not found and that's because our post route is actually at the slash API path. So we'll add that on there. We'll send that again and we got no message back and that's because it's an asynchronous function. And so we have to make this an async route. And in here, what we have to do is await this send prompt syntax. So we'll start that once more and we'll, you know, once again, third time the charm, we send that out and we get a response. We can see that we console.log the response here. And if we look at this, we have the full response. Here are a few tips that might be helpful with for when your partner is feeling grumpy, give them some space. Sometimes when a person is, you get the point. Super effective, absolutely brilliant technology. And now this is an endpoint that we could use in our front end applications and we keep all of our keys secure. So absolutely top notch technology. Anyway, that's the whole tutorial. I hope you make full usage of the OpenAI ChatGPT API. Absolutely phenomenal tech. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like and sub and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.